Hi, everybody. This is Andrea with ClearSpeak Accent Professionals. Let me show you what we're going to talk about today. This is another video in my series on English pronunciation for Korean speakers, native Korean speakers, on how to produce American English with clarity and confidence. Um, this series is designed to give you an overview of what you need to focus on specifically for that native language if you want to speak English with clarity, American English with clarity and confidence. Um, and you have a guide then to dive deeper into the areas that you need to work on. Again, my name is Andrea Lobb. I am a speech language pathologist with additional training in working with non-native English speakers on English pronunciation and my focus is clarity and confidence. Now I primarily work with English speakers or speakers in small groups and individual training sessions. So that is my primary focus. Um, but I wanted to talk today to, about uh, Korean specifically just to give people extra help. So this video series is based on work that I've done with those speakers. Uh, we've reviewed rhythm. I've done an intro video uh, and I just did one on B's and V's and P's and F's. Today we're going to talk about ch's, j's, sh's, and zh. So let's get into it. All right. I'm going to stop running this as a uh, presentation because it's annoying. Uh, the zoom controls block my control of that. So every time that I need to go back, it's kind of a mess. So hopefully you can see this is what I'm kind of talking about here. Okay. This group of sounds does not occur in the Korean phonetic inventory. So these are going to be a little bit more of a problem for Korean speakers of English. I recommend thinking about these as a group of sounds, tackle them all together. And what you're going to do is I, I thought like, oh, let's think about them as teams, team one and team two. Team one is sh and ch versus s and so sometimes th this SH will usually turn into more of an S-like sound, and the CH will either be an S, a T, or a TS kind of combination, typically, if it's not produced correctly. Um, and then team two is the Z and the J. Now, you should be able to hear that Z soft and kind of smooth. J, J, J is abrupt. It starts with a, it's kind of like a D sound and then moves into that Z sound. SH, sh, lip rounding, pulling the tongue back a bit, ch, 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 ch starts here and then moves back. The mistake with zh and j tends to be z or like a d and a z kind of combination. So again, your, your basic attack here is recognize the difference, know how to produce the difference, hear it, do some listening exercises to hear it, and then also be practicing saying it and making them sound different. Record yourself, listen and compare, practice in words, and then start building sentences and practice that motor habit over and over and over again so that it starts to feel more natural, sound natural to you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the difference here between sh or ch, again, team one, we're gonna group them together so that they're easier to learn, and specifically. So the difference here, they're both fricatives. For the most part, they're both fricatives. They have this blowing air component. So they're not different that way. But what they are different by is place. S, my tongue is all the way in the front. Kind of have a smiling position. Now when I say sh and ch, lots of things look different. I'm lip rounding. What you can't see is what's happening in my mouth. Thankfully, I have a lot of skill in, <laughs> in modeling this. Let's actually stop sharing for a second so you can see me a little bit bigger. Okay. You can see the tongue stay at the front. Now, when I say this normally, I don't have my teeth apart or whatever, right? See some so. I have my teeth down. Now, let's do shiz and shiz. Sh. My tongue is pulled back off the teeth. Shh. I am channeling the air down the middle of my tongue. I don't think that's typically hard for people. What's hard is what do I do with my tongue? My tongue is not here against my teeth. It's here. Shh. Behind the ridge. 
that bumpy section in your mouth. It's behind that a bit or right around that area. Shh. My lip rounding helps the tongue pull back a bit. Shh. Ch. Ch. Now when I say ch, I start up here just to give it a tap and then I pull my tongue back into the SH position. So that's what's happening inside my mouth. I think it's helpful to know what do I do with my tongue? How are these sounds different? Know how they're different. Try it yourself and be able to hear the difference. Those are some of your key elements. Let me share my screen again. Okay, so that's your difference. The ba same basic difference occurs for sh and j. I'm producing those exactly the same as sh and sh. I just have my voice on. Sh, 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 sh. Let's do ch and j. The only difference is voice. Ch, no voice. J, voice on. Inside my mouth is exactly the same. When I do the Z sound, my tongue's up against my back, the backs of my teeth again. So S and Z, same team. Kind of the same team. You gotta be moving that tongue back and rounding your lips a bit. Okay, let's look at the, let's listen and see if we can hear the difference. So here's our just sound, stage. Let's hear how this speaker says this word. Stays. I'm gonna turn it up a bit. Listen again. Stays. Stays. It sounds like stays, like she stays at home. Stays. Mm -hmm. Let's listen one more time. Stays. Stays. How it should look and sound is stage. 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 Okay, let's listen to zipper. Oh, pants with zipper. Okay, what we're listening on is that Z. This is what I was talking about with the B and F. Sometimes we work so hard on these sounds that it pulls the S and Z along with them. So now I'm working on shs and shs and js and zhs and working really hard on those to make them different from S and Z, but instead what happens is all of it becomes the same. What we need is to make them distinct in different categories of different teams. They have to stay on different teams. So let's listen to the Z and zipper again. A pants with zipper. 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 A pants with zipper. 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 Her tongue is too far back and she's got a little bit of a tap sound there. That's how the J is. It has a little tap sound. What it should sound like is zipper. Zipper. Dripper. Dripper. Zipper. Zipper. Extend the sound a bit to practice it. Okay, let's look at some pairs. Again, like in the last video for B's and P's and F's and V's, I made a minimal pairs list. The only difference between the words in this list is the target sound. Sometimes I used an S, sometimes I used a T and a Z and a D because those sounds do get confused with each other. So let's look at these differences. Shoo, su. Shoo, su. Shoo, two. Shoo, two. Sheet, seat, sheet, seat, show, so, show, so. Let's do the T. Show, toe, show, toe. I think the S mistake here is much more common than the T mistake for Korean speakers. Well, it's not true for everybody. Cash, cash, cast. There are some people um, named Cass or Cassidy that go by Cass. It's kind of a name. Cash, Cass. Let's look at the T. Cash, Cat. Let's look at jump. So we're going to focus on that. J -j 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 jump, jump, dump, jump, dump. Let's look at June, dune, June, dune. Now, if you're not saying jump correctly and you're saying it with a Z, it's a possibility. Obviously, that's going to happen for some speakers, but it's not a real word. But here's what that would sound like. Jump, zump, jump, zump. Let's do that with June, zoom, 
June, Zune. Zune just isn't a real word in English. Budge, budge, buzz, budge, buzz, budge, buzz. Let's look at the D. Budge, bud, budge, bud. Badge, bad, badge, bad. Now, if I say this with a Z, it's just not a real word. Badge, baz, badge, baz. It's like a cage, cage. If I say it with a Z, it sounds like I'm saying multiple, like there's three Ks in that word. Cage, case, cage, case, cage, j cage, case. Let's look at it with a D. It's again, I've heard this name before. Cage, cade, cage, Cade. Okay, can you hear the difference? If not, watch that section of the video a few times and train your ear for it. Look up some other resources potentially for this, although I think this is one where you're probably not going to find a lot of videos on, but maybe you will. Type words into Youglish. Are you hearing it? Uh, use the um, English Accent Coach website to listen for this difference, and I'll give that in the resources video. Um, I'll probably do a demo on that so you can see how to use it because it is a little bit confusing. What else? I think that's it. Okay, hear it, know how they're different, thinking about like what is my mouth doing that need to make these sounds different from each other, practice it in words, and then put them into little sentences and um, have fun practicing that. And if you need more resources, let me know. When you put things in the comments section, it helps guide my attention for what to make more videos on or how to help people a little bit better, what's helpful. Um, if you're at a point in your English practice where you need to work with a trainer or you think that would be valuable for you, let me know. Reach out on LinkedIn or send me an email directly and I will get back to you. I work with individuals and with small groups on pronunciation training. I have an entire course and system um, that is geared for you specifically. I don't do generic videos um, or video training because I want you to focus on what you need to work on, not on what most other people need to work on. So happy to help you. I hope you're having a good day. Bye.